be. <laughs> recording at the moment. There you go. So whatever you're doing is showing recording. Yeah, I made a decision. Okay, so let's um, get started. Um, hi everyone, it's Shelley Johns here from Gimpy. Um, I'm a global expansion team member. Um, been in the business for uh, 26 years, 27 next month, which is really cool. And just wanted to welcome you to the call tonight. So uh, we've got a really great um, lineup. And um, I'm just going to mute everyone that isn't already muted. That's okay, guys. And sorry, I'm trying to multitask at the same time. So if you're not muted, if you can mute yourself, that would be great, please. And um, okay, so because Mervyn's not on the call yet, Ross, I think we'll just go ahead and do your section. We'll just go through and then I can go back to Mervyn's afterwards. And for some reason, if he doesn't get on the call, it's not a problem. We'll do it next week or the week after, okay? Sure. Great. Okay, so let's move along. So our... Um, our call tonight is um, about back to, ba back to basics. So really simplifying your business. We don't want you to overcomplicate it. So um, we have World Team member Ross Henderson from Bundaberg who's going to be covering that. So go ahead, Ross. Okay, thanks, Shelley. Um, so the basis of the call tonight is, obviously everybody that's on the call is either part-time or full-time. So we're just trying to go back, right back to basics. So if you just move to the next slide, Shelley, please. So I'll just go through my story. So I was a supermarket manager and through a, an extreme event that happened here in the town, I lost the plot and it's the only way to say it. So I gave up on life, I gave up on work. I sat on a lounge and watched TV for over two years. Um, I got fatter. I couldn't put my shoes on without sitting on the floor and grunting and groaning because I couldn't tie my shoes up. And eventually my wife had had enough and went looking for a solution. And I said, if I've got to go and live in a gym, don't even talk to me. And eventually we found Herbal Life. We started together on an Ultima program. Um, energy took me nearly three months to come back from where I was from when I started. So there wasn't an instant shift in energy. It took over three months. And from there, I got the energy shift. I eventually lost 15 kilos. I didn't do any exercise in the process of that. My exercise was going for a little bit of a walk around the place and just working around my own property and doing bits and pieces. So from my point of view, yes, we're, it says 80% nutrition, 20% exercise. I didn't do any exercise and was still able to lose weight. So if anyone says, oh, they're sitting on the couch, they can't exercise, they can't do whatever, it is still 100% possible. So yeah, you want to go to the next slide? Next slide. So we talk about going back to basics and we all talk about use where talk, but we really need to go one step further and go back from there. Um, I had two members that we've just signed up in, the last, you know, in December, and I said to them, have you read your career manuals? The answer is no. I said every answer within reason is inside your career manuals. So we all need to go back and either reread the books, or if you haven't, read the books to start with. And even myself, when I was reading the books, I found that there was just little bits and pieces, not a great deal, but there were still little bits and pieces that I went, oh, I didn't realise I only had to do that or I had to do this. So that become um, fairly important. And we really need to go back to that point of view and read that. And I suppose I look at it this way. If you were in a career where you're a mechanic or whatever and you needed to know how to do something, what would you do? You'd go and read your career manual. You would go and read the process, you've gone with the manual on how to operate the problem. If you were to open a new business and you were to need to know the rules of conduct around workplace health and safety or food safety, all that, you would need to read what goes on. So why aren't we reading the career manuals and do we know them to death to start with so we can train our people and go from there? The next process we've got to look at within that is we need to understand how how serious are you about your business? And the problem is with most of us, and me included, we don't treat this business seriously enough. I have a team member that I spoke to today and she used to have a laundry business. And I said to her, what would you do, what were you gonna make in say in a period of time? And she said, oh, in about three years from when she just, the business went up, she had issues and that's why she's not part of the business, of what she was doing. 
But she said, within three years, I could probably have made about $100,000 return. That's where I was heading at. I said, okay, that's fine. I said, so how serious are you with what we're doing? And she said, I am, but I'm still, still struggling, still learning. And I said, I get that. I said, do you realise within three years, if you really got the same level of activity together, you'd make that in a month and within what we're doing, if we all really got in and put the same level in. And I turned around and said, when I was a supermarket manager, I used to go to work Christmas weeks, and now were the worst case, but the worst case scenario, four o'clock in the morning, we'd work all day, flat out, till eight o'clock at night, go home, sleep, and go back to work at four o'clock in the morning for the week of Christmas, because that was their busiest time of year. But we don't do that in what we're doing for ourselves. And I'm not saying we have to work those ridiculous hours, but why aren't we putting the same seriousness into this business as we, do, we would do if we went and bought a business? I looked many years ago to go and buy myself a muffin break business. Now, the cost of that was going to cost me well over $300,000. And then I had to pay wages. Then I had to do whatever to get the money back. I can start a Herbalife business, and we also add in 183, but we really start a Herbalife business for eight bucks. Because you can go and sell your first canister one if you want to at retail for $73. That means it's eight bucks. And at the end of the day, Herbalife gives us a 90-day money-back guarantee on our, on our Herbalife member pack. It's a win-win, and we don't take it seriously enough. So realistically, book one's going to give you 90% of the answers that you need to know about most of it, how to do a testimonial, how to do um, tell, show, try, do, and how to do most of it. You can pretty well run most of your business from the first book. The second book is your... Rules and regulations, which we need to know, because I need to know the rules and regulations so that the gold standard that I don't stuff something up for someone else. And that's what's so important, that I don't stuff anything up that screws up the brand for someone else that may need. I don't want to stuff it up. So we really need to know what's going on within our manuals and what we go from there. So, um, Russ, how, like, would you recommend for a new person, how many times would you recommend reading the career manual then? We were always told four. Yeah. Um, I really, I suppose it comes down to your own level of comprehension. I know I'm not the fastest reader under the sun. I know that if I don't, if I can't um, comprehend something fully, I know I'll have to go back over it and read it and read it. And like I had a conversation with you earlier today, I find the first book harder to read than the second book. I can read the rules better than I do the first book. And I think that's probably because when I read the first book at the moment, because I already, do, already know the opportunity and what the business is about, I'm trying to read through things that I probably already know, but I needed to slow myself down to go, hang on a minute, how would my new member read this book? How would they comprehended what was going on? So, yes, it can feel a little bit tiresome and laborsome, but at the same time, what am I trying to achieve? I'm trying to achieve to understand that. And if I was in any other industry, I would want to know the rules, I'd want to know the regulations, I'd want to know what to do to do it. So you may have to read it four times. You may have to put post notes in it and all those sort of things. But the marketing plan, everything we need to know is pretty well in the book. Now, we can help fine tune specific slides or specific um, flyers and how to do walk and talks. We can help with all that. The book itself is going to give you 99% of what you need to know. So at least four times short. Cool. So it's interesting that you said that the first one you find harder to read than the second because it's the opposite for me. I find the rules of conduct. We're all different, aren't we? We are all different. Yes, you're right. So that's okay. I mean, that's what makes up the world, hey? That's right. So when you're ready, next slide. Okay. So the other big thing is we've got to do is we've got to stop overcomplicating it. You go to the Mark Hughes, um volumes and listen to the trainings and everything. We all get told, I don't know about that. We all say at times too much. We all just make something that is, and that's the problem, that's the beauty of this visit. It is so simple. It's use a product and get a great result. It's wear something to tell someone about it and just talk to people. And we've just got to not over have a vomit at times over people. Not trying, when people come up to you and go, oh, well, what's in this, what's in that? Look, hey, I'm not real sure, let's go look at the canister. The less you know, the faster you seem to go. The more you start, you start telling, oh, it's got this, it's got this percentage, it's got that and that, 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 and you're asking them to ask more and more and more questions. 
If you're not sure, grab a canister together, whatever it is, whether it's an energy, whether it's a cellulose, whether it's whatever, read it together. Grab your product book, the main big book you've got, and go through it with the client. Hey, look, it's got this in, it's got that in it. And at the end of the day, the biggest answer is, I don't know about that. It took me three months to get an energy shift, but now I feel fantastic and you know, I've got so much energy. That's your best answer. Um, the other one I normally use with people is normally if they don't go to a normal shop and go, oh, what's in that fruit drink behind the counter and how much sugar's in it and whatever, well, why are you asking me? You know what I mean? Let's go and read the back of the container together and go from there. And just try and stay with the facts. The more you stay with the facts, direct, try not to oversell them, give them value, you're not going to overcomplicate it. Just make it as simply as you possibly can. Yeah, well, I yeah. think um, Mark Hughes does a training call where uh, it must be in you know the 80s and he's on stage and he gets all these people to line up and they all have to ask him questions. I don't know if you've heard it before. It's really good. And they ask him all, but well, it doesn't matter what he's, what they say, he just says, I don't know about that, all I know is, and he just says it over and over and over and over again. It must have been like 20 people come up. And you know what, I know it's hard to say, I don't know about that, but if you start doing it, um, it, it will speed things up for you. So yeah, I think it's a really good point, Ross, thank you. Nice. Next slide. Yes, please. <clears throat> so obviously we, um, I stole this from the last SCS I went to. And it is, it's really what our job is. Our main job is this. We invite someone to a presentation, whether it's a HOM, whether we can get them to an SDS, whether it's to a shake party, whether it's to a skin party. It doesn't matter what it is, but that's our job. Invite someone to some sort of presentation. From there, hopefully, um, they see the, the value in what we do. They become a consumer they eventually register. They eventually get their own testimonial. And from there, their own testimonial brings us back to an invitation, to a presentation, and then we eventually go to the main thing in the middle, which is our major events, which is either SDS, Spectacular, just coming, Extravaganza, or whatever those events are. So really, we all say at times, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I haven't got time. If you're not actually either talking to someone, whether it's online, Zoom call, over the phone, doesn't matter how it is, you aren't actually working unless you're actually talking to someone and inviting them to something. We have to invite our people to something because sometimes they're not interested in listening to us and they resonate with someone else. They listen to another testimonial in the room. They, they pick up on what someone else has said um, because they're, we're the only ones they're talking to. They may not yet have enough faith in us to believe what we're trying to say but someone else says the same sort of thing and then someone else in the room says the same thing. It depends on where it is. Um, SDS is fantastic because there's enough people getting up and saying the same, very similar thing, so therefore there's enough testimonials in that environment to really get that, that point of view across. But that's our job, talking to people, getting an invitation to a presentation, register the person, and then we just circle continues and goes around from there. That's as simple as what we do. It's that simple. So if, you, if there was someone on this call that um, maybe didn't live, um, they might live remotely or they don't live in a city or maybe where there's um, somewhere there's a, you know, somewhere in a presentation, what would you suggest they do to do that presentation part? To do that presentation part, I suppose um, we could either, a lot of us have our own um, recorded HOMs and we can help with all that's concerned and we can send that HOM to somebody if need be. Um, we could, that would probably be the easiest way in most cases. You can still do the presentation across the phone or you could do a three-way call. So you could pick up a uh, sideline, upline um, and say, hey, can you give me a hand to have a conversation? I'm going to, we need to do a three-way call with whoever the person is, depending on who it is. And we could do a three-way call and help do that presentation together and we could go that way. Right. So if you were on the call tonight and you're listening in and you don't have like an HOM in your local area, so you can just grab a recording or the presentation or do a three-way call or something like that. So there's, there's never a problem and you should just get started, that's what I would say. Oops, we want next slide. Yes, please. So we're all here to help each other and to achieve. So basically what 
um, we want to raise here is exactly what we just said. So within the Challenge Yourself Daily, um, we all need to help each other. So therefore, if you've got questions or you don't have a HOM that slide or recorder that you have, you need to throw those questions out in the Challenge Yourself Daily. So between us all, we can answer it, it, those calls. We can make it interactive. We can talk to each other and go, hey, yeah, look, I've got a recording of that. I'll, we'll shoot that across to you on an email or Dropbox or whatever system works the best for you. And then work together. Um, we also want to know, so this, these calls can work to the maximum capacity for everybody is, what is people struggling with? What are they finding difficult to do? Um, we all do in different ways and shapes and form, and we need to make this so that, hey, anything you've got concerns with, you can throw those questions up into um, Challenge Yourself Daily. So from there, we can go, right, okay, great, let's do a team call around that. Let's do some role plays around that. Let's help where we can, because that's what it's about. From my point of view, it's about, I don't care whether people are up lines, down lines, side lines, who gives a shit? We need to work together to get a canister of shake in every single home, straight up to start with, but in the world. That's, that's it, that's what we do. That's what's gonna give the value and work with each other. It doesn't matter, it's, it's what it's about. So yeah, we're just telling you anything that we can do there, we need to have that interaction. Um, we need to use Challenge Yourself Daily if that's what you're gonna work with with us. It's like people don't always understand um, we put posts up from time to time in Challenge Yourself Daily on a daily basis and you may not even get a like. It's, it's like, who am I talking to? Am I talking to me? Some days I do the post because I'm, I need my own kick in the butt. But other days I'm trying to motivate and help other people. And it's just to know that, you know, 20 people might have seen it, but nobody even acknowledged whether they saw it or didn't see it. Mm -hmm. We need to make Challenge Yourself Daily as much interactive as we can without it becoming silly and ridiculous, but business related as much as we can. So well, I think that every, I'll just have a look at all the names. I'm pretty sure every single person is on that group, Challenge Yourself Daily. So make sure you add all your team members to it because that's what it's there for. It's there for communication. So you know when the calls are coming up and like Ross just said, you can ask questions. We, any questions you've got, instead of PMing it to us or texting or calling, put it on the group because I can, I can pretty much assure you that there's someone else that would have exactly the same question and it's a great way for the whole group to learn um, because you'll get you know, lots of people answering it and um, you know, it's just it's working together as a team and putting all the answers in one place. So make sure that you do that. Um, if you if you know you're on the call, on the group, so make sure it's called Challenge Yourself Daily, you should be able to find it. And it's a it's a secret group, so you're not going not everyone can see it, of course. And um, but definitely add all your team members to it. So let's get it really interactive and have a look at like I know Mervyn and Ross post every single day. So make sure you like it and comment on it. We want more interaction. And you know what? It, it works both ways. If you do that, people will do it back to you. So let's set a really good example. Yeah, so before you jump off that slide, Shelley, from my point of view, I don't care who you are. I will do everything I can to help anybody, as long as I don't feel I'm being used and abused, I suppose. But I will do anything I can. We, I used, I did a walk and talks in this town, and we went, to, we found Steph, who's lives in this town. She's got nothing to do with me. She doesn't even know who her upline is directly. And she's in a florist shop, and we're doing whatever I can to get her to back up. She came to the other day and said, hey, why did I lose my 42%? I went, well, have you done your two and a half, three months training? No, I didn't. Nobody ever trained her. I don't, if I can get her back motivated and help her in to come and be with me when I'm doing a HOM, I'm not benefiting from that, but someone may resonate with the way she talks. It might be one of my clients that are in the room the way she talks. It might be one of her clients that she brings along that listens to me that she can get going and kick herself along again. That's what it's about. I don't have an issue with helping any single other person to develop and to improve to whatever they want to do. I don't work in that other vein. It's not what this is about to me. My attitude is we need to get the shape of canister in everybody's home. That's, that's the only reason I do what I do. Well, well, I think um, this whole group is full of orphans. I think we've all been, you know, we're all bonded in together and that makes for a very strong and diverse team. So that's good. So uh, next slide. Yes, please. So the other thing is be yourself. When I first started in Herbalife, I was told, just be you, just be you, just be you. Then it was like, yeah, you can't do that. Hang on a minute, do you want me to be me? and be my uniqueness self, or you want me to be a robot or a puppet of you. I don't want I don't want people to be like me at all. I want people to be their unique self because someone that's unique self could be 10 times better than I am. 
I don't want you to be like me at all. I want everybody to be who they are. And because at the end of the day, the more real you are, the more people you'll attract. As soon as you start to put on the blah, 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 whatever, I can tell you it won't be very long before the people around you notice that and get the shit you do and you lose them. I will tell it how it is. I am straight to the point with my team, mostly pretty well all girls. I don't pull any punches and at times I probably get into the point where they're about to cry and I don't intend to do that, but I don't pull any punches. But at the same time, I have their best interest at heart because I want them to succeed. I, I want them to succeed, but I am who I am. I don't hold back and when I get passionate, I get passionate and I don't try and hold it back. So just be your unique self. Don't put out the crap and the bullshit. Just be who you are. Shelley, do you want to say anything to that? Oh, I think you remind me a bit of my sponsor, Merv, who I found quite scary and <laughs> intimidating. Not saying you're scary, and you haven't made me cry yet. <laughs> Give it time. Um, so, you know, I just think you do need to be yourself. You know, I was, um, no, Jan's on the call. We were really shy. So, if, if you're shy, does it matter? No. If you're not a people person like my sponsor, Merv, no, it doesn't matter. If you're passionate and blunt, it, it really does not matter. You're outgoing and social. Um, I just love that it doesn't matter who you are, what personality type you are, you can bring that into, you know, into herbal life, and I just love that. When you're ready, yeah. Next slide. Now, this is the hardest thing to do. The hardest thing to do. Put your shoes on, go and face the rejections, get out the door, and do something about it. It is the hardest thing we all face. We all face that fear of rejection. We all get that knot in the guts. We all struggle. We can do all the reading we like. We can do all the videos we like. We can do whatever we want. If you can't put those shoes on and walk out that front door, you can't do anything. It is one of the hardest things what we face. Once we can find a way to get past it, great. It's that fear of rejection that wipes us out 99% of the time. We are terrified of someone saying no. And we've just got to find a way to get past it. And every individual's got to do that. Everybody's got to do their own way of doing that. It's not easy, I can tell you that. For someone that five years ago was sitting on a lounge to now, I know how difficult it can be. It's not an easy process. And we all get nervous. We all may not look like we are, but we all go to the toilet 10 times sometimes before we go and get on stage or whatever we have to do because it's what happens and it's just a flower of finding a way and we all work together and help each other with it. So don't think you're on your own with, with that percent in any way, shape or form. Yeah, well, I remember Gary always saying that, you know, he used to stutter. You know, he was talking to 30 people a day and he stuttered doing that. Imagine how difficult that would be. And I remember even, I think, Rob Walsh telling a story of when this little, you know, little guy was sitting on the phone in the corner answering the phone uh, with his script and stuttering. And, you know, he just had such a strong will to overcome that. And even when he was Chairman's Club, um, before he got on stage, he said that he'd still feel like throwing up before he went out. So, you know, everyone has fears and has those sort of things, but I guess it's just doing it anyway. So have you got any tips on what you do before you go and talk to people, Ross? What, what do you normally do? Go to toilet 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> probably now I've got to the point where I, my attitude is I don't give a shit yeah. that's the reality I don't give a shit anymore I know that I'm going to get rejection yeah. I know that I've got the attitude of there's 52 cards in a pack of deck of cards and there's only four aces and I could have to talk to 48 people to find, a, find, a, find an ace yeah. I know that I know most people and I get to the point where I don't really care anymore I, that's probably the easiest way. And I still get nervous, but I mean, when I start, I, not, I don't always go and do what talks about. I absolutely don't. But when I go, I don't care. I just, it's like, well, you're either going to accept me or you're not. And I, sometimes if I'm in a, if they're pissing me off, I'll be as blunt as blunt. And I, I won't be rude, but I will turn around to people and go, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to change your life or do you want to stay with you? And I've, I've still got people out there at the moment that we're talking to that people are difficult. I have a client that was a girlfriend many years back. I'm talking 30 plus years back that is struggling like hell at the moment with depression and bits and pieces and running a business. And I've said to her, and she knows exactly what I'm like, hey, you need to get on this product because she's overweight. She knows she's overweight. And I said, your business is struggling. I can help you with that. And she's still a battle. So, and she's a battle and I know the person. Everyone else is a battle. 
the issue, I suppose, at the end of the day is just, you know, probably the next set of slides will probably tell you where my attitude probably is at the moment, where that's the centre, and why I can just understand it. And that's probably the best way, is personal development, is which is the next two slides will show you. You have to change your headspace. Well, when then, um, I was going to say, that before I go and talk to people, and I was really shy, so I used to walk into a shop, I'd go to walk in, and then I'd just turn around and walk back in. <laughs> I'd lose my nerve, but I realised that this could be my, my presence team member. So if I don't go and speak to them, they'll never know. So that's kind of my motivation as I just do that what if thing uh, works quite well for me as well. And you know what, just because someone says no doesn't mean it's no forever because their circumstances change. And um, I think wasn't the book you've been reading, it's up to six times, something like that, that you should go back and talk to someone? Yeah, well, basically the Jack Canfield scenario says that um, most people give up after the first time, and I can't remember the percentages. Ninety-four percent of people will, ninety-four percent of people, or whatever it is, give up after the first go, and whatever, whatever it goes down to, it virtually goes down to that forty-six percent of the people aren't interested in talking to you until at least the sixth time before you even got a chance to get someone to say yes. And most of us give up before we get to five, let alone get to six. And obviously the numbers can be greater depending on where you are. But that's the principle I found with the book is that there's, they've done stats on that and then most of us all, that's why we all fail because we give up way too early because we're not, we're not prepared to just keep going and going and going. And I suppose before you jump to the next slide, Shelley, I suppose what I look at at times is this. Yes, I want to make money, absolutely, but I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it because one of my team members I've got at the moment, I invited him multiple times to come down and try to shake. And she said, no, 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 no. I lent on a counter at 1.31 one day and she said, I haven't got time, I've got to go to me. I said, I don't care. You need to come down to me now. I basically almost physically grabbed her by the hand, but didn't. And she came down and she tried to stay. That afternoon, she lost her job. She's a team member at the moment and she's coming to Adelaide. Now, she's still building and that's great. But what happens if I hadn't have gone and asked her on that last day to come down and try to stay? That person missed, could potentially missed an entire opportunity. That's why we do it. That's why we go back. Because we just don't know when we're going to be in the right place at the right time to help someone change their life. It's not about me making money. It's about changing their life. Because I know the more successful I make them, it just ripples. I become successful anyway. I want them to succeed. I want them to succeed and they will help me succeed. It's not about, I want, I hate to see that person that's fat on the street that's just tried that diet and just won't try it one more time. I hate to see that person that's got no income. I hate that. I hate to see, I had a girl the other week where I was, was getting something and she was bawling her eyes out because she just can't do it. And I, I'm struggling to get her to come and see the opportunity because she is so deep in her own forest that she cannot see the trees any longer because her husband's working away and she's just struggling with life with kids, I am not going to give up on her. I will just keep battling away and battling away and battling away. And my attitude is I'm going to swear, until they tell me to F off, I'm going back. I'm going back and I'm going back until they tell me to F off because I want, I'm, I want them to be able to see the bigger picture. And if they do, and if I get team members to Adelaide and they don't see it after that, can't as well, I've done what I can. I've got them to the presentation. I've done what I can. But I have to give everybody the opportunity. It's not about me making them a president, them being my president team. It's me changing their life. I get them to lose a few kilos and make them feel better. Team member today said, for the first time, I've been able to mow the lawn. Hasn't been able to do it for whatever period of time because she's got more energy. That's what it's about, changing that lifestyle. That's why we need to put our shoes on. Yeah. Sorry. That, no, that's cool, thank you, Ross. Um, and so I think we all need to adopt that six, you know, sell for someone six times. Just keep going back and you know, and let them know, you know, that you do care. Not, not doesn't have to be in a pushy way. So thank you. So next slide. So these two slides pretty well where I probably started to change my headspace. So I'm just going to read them out. So if you shoved your head underwater and you believed you're going to die, you'd fight, fight clawing to scratching for air. The fear isn't as imposing, but you're going to die. So why aren't you fighting every single day to really live? You may not feel it, but the clock's ticking. And living isn't always just about being alive. If you find yourself, chase your happiness. Be a beast in this body, and you'll live far longer than your, than your flesh. 
So, you know, if I shoved your head underwater, you'd do everything you could to stay alive to fight and fight and fight and fight and fight. What's the difference? The fear's the same. You just got to find it. You've just got to understand it the same way and change it from there. And then the next one when you're ready. And this is from Steve Jobs. This is what pushes him. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external exceptions, expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You're already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. At the end of the day, we have a clock. We can't stop it. Herbal life can help us slow it down. We can't stop it. So what are we doing about it? Every day we waste is one that we can't get back. And we, when we start to have that attitude that, now, every day I waste that somebody else that I haven't helped survive or get onto the product or got them a few extra dollars in their bank account or whatever the case may be. And it's just, it's probably what changes my attitude a little bit about why I now can go out and just talk to people because I understand the clock sticking. Um, you know, one of the things I read once is there's only, there's only two guarantees in life. Saying the next 10 years is I can guarantee one or two things are going to happen. And it's really scary when you think about it. You're either going to be dead or you're going to be 10 years older. You can't stop either one of them. So we've got to do something about it and just do everything we can to every single day. Every day we waste, we, we're ticking that clock away that we can't change. So, yeah. And last one when you want it is to um, Mark Hughes. Again. Your success is only limited by your own imagination and your hard work. And that's really what it comes down to. There's no other solution other than that. We can, we can, if we just want to be a product lover and cover the cost of our product, great. If we want to do it part time because that's all we want to put in and just help a few people, great. If you want to do it full time, fantastic. But you, we need to choose where we want to be and not kick ourselves in the butt if we just want to be a product lover. Not kick ourselves in the butt if we want to just be part time. But if we want to be full time, we really need to understand, put the shoes on and get out the door every single day. Go and do something about it and go and change other people's lives because that's what he wanted to do. He did this because he didn't want to see another child lose a parent through a prescription-style cocktail of sleeping pills and weight loss drugs. That's why he changed. That's what we know. That's the story. He didn't do it to make money. Sure, he knew he could make everybody money, but he didn't do it for that. He did it to change the world and not let someone else have another tragedy. We've got to look at the same way. Every time we see someone that's overweight, someone we see that's got anorexia, that's underweight, what can we do to help? Every time we see someone that's, that's struggling to put food on the table, what can we do to help? That's how we should be looking at it, not, not on, oh, how much money can I make out of it? That's how I look, that's how I look at Herbalife currently in my head, headspace at the moment, and that's why I can go out and I don't have an issue when I talk to people. So... That is me, Shelley. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Russ. And this, that um, quote, just looking at it, um, you know, hard work. Most of us are, do work hard. If you're, you know, if you're in a job, like you're saying, the hours it used to do, most people work hard. And um, the imagination part, I think, comes into it that, you know, you just got to get creative and find ways of working around your current situation, your job, so that you can actually do herb life in the cracks of your day or get up an hour earlier or go to bed an hour later and work on your... Uh, you know, on on your dream while you're working in a job, if you have to do that. And it's so, you know, this is what you need to do. And that's, you know, you're already working hard. So start putting some extra effort into into your dream and it will become a reality. So I like that imagination part. That's about being creative. So, okay, well, thank you very much, Russ, for that. Um, that was great. And I hope you got a lot out of it, Business Basics. Um, just some things that you can utilize, but make sure you start reading those career manuals, okay? And you've got any questions about the career manuals, put them on Challenge Yourself daily. So we're just going to finish off with the last couple of slides, and then we've got a special treat with Mervyn doing some personal development. So hang on two seconds. So this is coming up. How many days is it? We're out with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So four more days. Uh, we have our amazing event. So this is all of Australia and New Zealand coming to Adelaide. Um, yeah, we're doing recognition training. We've obviously got an amazing guest speaker here. And um, 
I know everyone's seen all the flyers come out of his story. You know, he didn't have a, um, you know, an easy run. This guy had a lot of, um, I know, a lot of setbacks and a lot of challenges and he's actually going to be sharing um, how he overcame them and how he's become successful. So success always leaves clues. So if ever an event to be in, you can, you know, you can still get here. And um, if this ticket cut off is tonight, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, sorry, tomorrow night. And, um, but you can still buy your tickets at the door. So you can drive there, you can fly there. If you live in Adelaide, well, you're already there, but I would definitely highly recommend that you get to this event. So uh, it's two days of training, includes this really cool Latin party, which I know a lot of people are really excited about going to. Um, and you know, they've got fantastic entertainment, um, it's usually a theme, so you get to dress up as well and have a lot of fun. So plus you get training, there's food and um, drinks put on for the night as well. So it's a, you know it's a whole weekend of celebrating and you know getting to know people, networking, building friendships, building bonds with your team. And um, yeah, so if you haven't got your blue armband, I'm sure there's a few people with it on your blue. You'll get this at Spectacular. And um, there's special merchandise. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a product launch. There'll be a whole lot of things happening, including a whole lot of recognition. So there's a whole bunch of us going and um, we can't wait to see you all there. Um, so I just wanted to finish off just so you know, because there's a few of us traveling back from Spectacular and we won't be there on um, Monday night. Next week's call is actually on Tuesday night. Uh, it will be recorded. It's called Just Got Back from the Spectacular. So we'd love everyone to share their experience from Spectacular. So make sure that, um, that you can get on the call and share what you got out of it. We'd love to hear from everybody. Send all your photos into me and I'll make up a big slideshow with all the, the photos as well. Just PM them through to me. And um, this is the call. So it's next Tuesday, 13th of February, 7.30 p.m. Queensland time. Um, so I'll just either set up a separate link or I'll change this link so that it matches the call time. So don't worry, I'll let you know. Um, okay, so uh, just to finish off, um, we've got um, finish off with some personal development because Ross just talked about the importance of personal development and working on yourself. And just remember, personal development isn't just reading and watching videos. That It's actually putting it into action to overcome a challenge. So when you put what you've read and learned into action, that's actually the, the whole part of personal development. So make sure that you find different ways of being able to use it on a day-to-day -day basis to solve problems and to grow. So Mervyn, I'm just going to find your slide for you. Oops, let's wait. Why do I, why do people put me in charge of this? <laughs> okay, so all right. <laughs> I'm just gonna find it, yes. Well, you knew what would probably happen. It was just too good to be true. <laughs> I'll find it, hang on, Mervyn. Just hang on two seconds. <laughs> I just gotta open the PowerPoint up again. Uh, you cannot minimise while you're recording. Okay, that's okay. We don't need it. We'll just bring up Mervyn to talk because that's much easier than me trying to find that slide. So, Mervyn, where are you? Here you are. I'm just going to unmute you. Uh, so, Mervyn, come on up and share. About, we love all your posts that you're doing every day. In fact, I just find them quite relevant each day when I'm reading them. Up. There's always something I think, wow, it's like he's talking to me. Um, so, um, yeah, we'd love you to share five or ten minutes of something that um, that you'd like to cover. Well, Sherry, I think I'm back. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, I'll go back a little bit, um, just to give you a bit of uh, past history. Sure. I was a professional engineer for something like 40 years before I retired, and uh, I still haven't retired. But during that time, I think the only personal development I did was actually when I was doing my qualifications and I learned something about colours, but I didn't really take it in. I didn't understand. And it wasn't until five years ago when I joined a group in the States that I really began to understand the reason for personal development. And since then, I've learned a lot. I've overcome many of my fears. One of my biggest fears was actually talking to people. You give me a thousand people to talk to, I'm happy. But give me one on one and it becomes very difficult or it did for me. But being on the training calls with this group, I learned to speak up on the calls, not to be afraid to voice my opinions. But the thing that the group taught me 
your opinions always had to be positive, not negative. And a lot of the time that was um, developed through reading a book, which you probably all read, which was Think and Grow Rich. I have read, I read Think and Grow Rich some 14 years ago when I joined Herbalife. And I thought it was a novel. And I didn't really take any notice of it. And it was only when I came to study it, as we do week by week, and people say, how can you go through a book, chapter by chapter, doing a chapter a week, and learn something? It's actually what you get out of that chapter, not what you think someone else is trying to teach you out of that chapter, but it's actually what you get out of that chapter from your own thoughts. And if you put those down in, on paper and actually share them with other people, as we do on a forum, two, uh, two calls per week, then you get a lot more out of it. You learn that um, people struggle the same as you do. As Ross was saying earlier on, you have to, or as Jim Ryan also says, you have to work more on yourself than you do actually on your distributors or your clients or whatever. Because as long as you know what you're talking about, they will follow you. And I found now, and the other thing is asking questions. There's a time in my life when I would never ask a question, simply and solely because I thought it was a stupid thing to ask. But I then learned that someone else was thinking the same thing and having the same problem. So I came over, overcame the problem, and these days I will ask questions no matter how simple it um, seems or how difficult it seems. Because as you say, if we post them on the forum each day on Challenge Yourself Daily, someone will come up with the answer which will solve your problem. And I think this is more important than trying to um, read books or anything else because sometimes the book does not give you the full answer but it certainly will give you a guide. And if you ask the question, like Russ has given us a lot of pointers tonight, then you will get the answers you're looking for. And the other thing I've learned now that if you know the person's personality colour, you can change the way you talk to them. Uh, the personalities we are, will answer the phones differently. They will talk to you differently. They will tell you things or they will not tell you things about themselves. One of the personalities, if you ask them about their family, they'll immediately put the phone down on you. Another person, if they're on the phone, another personality group, if they're on the phone, they will always answer it. The other three personality groups won't. So there is a lot to be learnt from personal development. It's not a, a thing you can always learn from books, and I certainly didn't learn it from books. I've learnt it from being with people. You know, you can pay thousands of dollars and go to Tony Robbins and these sort of people but you don't get the total interact, interaction between people that you can on some of the training calls that we do from the States. Does that answer some of your questions, Shirley? Why I'm so passionate about personal development? Yeah, thank you. Um, so, so, so tell me, what's happened to you on the products? So do you live in the ACT, is this right? I, we live in the ACT at the present time. If you want my product result, yep. 15 years ago I went to the doctor, and he said, because I knew him very well, he said, Mervyn, if you don't do something about your weight, I'm going to increase your blood pressure medication, and I'm going to put you on diabetes medication. And I thought, no, you're not. I just received the, as it was then, the IBP from Herbalife with the products in it. It was an, it was an advanced pack. So I thought, well, I've got nothing to lose. I've tried all the other diets. They work, but they can't be maintained. Well, that's what I found. So I went on the Herbalife to, um, products. In 12 weeks, I lost 12 kilos. I went back to the doctor and he put me on the scales and said, oh, that's great. You've lost 12 kilos. 
Then he took my blood pressure. And he said, that's very good today. Then he looked at his notes and said, why didn't you come back two months ago for your blood pressure medication? And I asked him the straight question, do I need it? And he said, no, and I haven't taken it since. I know Herbalife doesn't cure anything, we can't claim, but that's what happened to me. And I've never looked back since, and I'm, I turn 80 in May. It's awesome. Such a great result. Thank you for the disclaimer too. So I didn't have to add that in. <laughs> so, great. So do you think you could share your product result for us on uh, Challenge Yourself Daily? Have you got like a before and after or a testimony written up that you could share that we could use? I can give you the one that actually Herbalife produced for me back in 2006 as a centrefold in the journal. You're a centrefold. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Only time I'll ever make a centrefold. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Um, so did you have anything else that you wanted to share? Because I know I've just got a couple more minutes before we finish off, but I would actually love you to do another segment um, coming up this year, if you would be happy to do that. But please keep doing your daily posts. I, I really love them. And I know a lot of people do as well. But everyone on call, make sure you're commenting and liking it because that interaction is what we really need on our group. You know, if we all start doing it, it builds a really great um, energy and a really great culture and community. And um, this is how we will all grow together. Only, the only comment I would make, Shelley, is if anyone wants to know any more about the, the uh, personal development group I belong to in the States, which is called Mentoring for Free, and it is totally free. There are eight training calls per week, four are recorded, four aren't. And three of them, are, they're all interact interactive. So you can interrupt and you can do anything and they're really good. I find them excellent. But if anyone wants any more information, just come back to me. Well, oh, thank you, Mervyn. So um, thank you very much for sharing tonight and to um, Ross for covering the business basics. And I look, I know that most of us are going off to the spectacular uh, this week, which is going to be amazing. Um, so next week, remember it's Tuesday night, put it in your diary, 7.30 p.m. Queensland time. Uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, then we're just going to roll out with a whole bunch of um, trainings for the rest of the year. So definitely put your hand up if you want to contribute and uh, would love to have you all on the call. So thank you very much, Mervyn. I'm just going to mute you now and then I'm going to finish recording. So, okay. So uh, thanks, guys. Have a great night. So the recording will, will go out. I'll just have to, this is my first time doing it on this link. So um, just be patient while I work out how to do it. Once I've done it once, I should be right. So uh, have a fantastic night and I'll see you all at the spectacular. Bye everyone.